Hello everyone, this is Reza Durrani. In today's video, I will show you how we can add a save as draft feature to Power Apps Forms. Users can save their data in draft status and come back and continue from where they left off and submit their form data. This can be very useful in scenarios of large or complex forms. So let's check it out. The scenario here is a simple event itinerary application in which we can organize all our important event details in one location. In this Power App, we click on Get Started. This will list out all the events that are stored in our events data source. The data source is a simple events itinerary SharePoint list. And here we have different pieces of metadata to store the event information from the name of the event to the type of the event, start date, end date, and other relevant details. In the app, in order to create the event, the user can simply click on the plus icon and this will load the event form. Here I have leveraged the Power Apps form control and the form control is connected to the SharePoint list as a data source. And in here, I have picked the fields that I would like the user to fill out. And once the user clicks on the submit button, we will execute the submit form function to submit the data to the SharePoint list. Now here is where we would like to add an additional option, which is save as draft. Now there are many scenarios in which you would want to provide the users with an option to save the data in draft before they go ahead and submit it. The user may not have all the information about the event in one go. So the user would like to fill out certain pieces of information and click save as draft, come back later and fill out the remaining part of the form. The form could be extremely large, could be a multi-part form or a multi-screen form in which the user has to fill out a lot of pieces of information. Maybe the user only has certain pieces of data available currently, so they can at least fill that out and click save as draft and come back later. Or in this scenario, I want to create the event and just save it as draft and submit it only when I want this event to be visible to other users. So to provide the user with the save as draft option, the first important step here is to ensure that we have a status column to track the status of the event. So here I have created a simple choice column in my SharePoint list. The statuses that I'm maintaining are draft and submitted. As part of my SharePoint list, I only have one mandatory column here, which is session name. So to add that save as draft option, I will add a second button here called save as draft. And when the user clicks on this button, I will go ahead and submit the form. However, here is where I would like to make that distinguish between saving this form as draft versus submitting this form. So for this form control, I will first go ahead and add that status column. And that status card is right here. I will go ahead and unlock this data card for status. And because I do not want the user to change the status, I will search for the display mode property of this data card. Click on display mode, change the display mode to display mode dot view. So this status data card here becomes a view only data card. Now when the user clicks on either of these buttons, I would need to change the status card value. So here, when the user clicks on save as draft, I will first create a variable. And in this case, because I need the variables only on the screen, I will create local variables using the function update context. Give my variable a name. I follow a naming standard for local variables. So I prefix it with LOC. And then I've named it as is submit. And I'm going to set this to the value false. Now for the submit button on select, I will go ahead and set that same local variable to true because the user is going to submit the event. Now that I have this local variable that's being set on click of either of these buttons, for the status data card, if we look at the update property, I will change this to the following formula. If that local variable which returns a true or a false depending upon the button that is clicked. Because my status column is a choice column and it has two values, draft and submitted, the way we will set it right here 
is by using curly braces value colon the actual text value. So if the submit button is clicked, the value will be submitted. If the draft button is clicked, the value would be draft. Now here in my events list, the only mandatory column I have is the title column. You could have additional mandatory fields. And the technique that I'm showcasing right here with the form control, I have not set any of the fields as mandatory in my data source. Now in Power Apps, you can make your form control more restrictive, but you cannot make it least restrictive. If I go back to my SharePoint list here, and if I make the session code a required column, so if I add a title here and try to save this, notice how I still get that error on the form control that says the field is required. And the reason is because I have made it a required field in my data source. So the form control will not be able to submit the data. Now in case of save as draft, you would not want to apply any mandatory field restrictions because the user is just filling out some basic pieces of information that they have and they would like to save it as draft and come back to it and complete the form prior to submitting. So here the key with the form control technique is to ensure that in your data source, you do not add those required field restrictions. Instead, we will add those restrictions right here in the data card itself. And the way we can implement that is for my session code data card. If I search for the required field property, you see it's set to false because it's coming as false from my data source. So I will go ahead and unlock this. And right here, I can change this to true. However, I would like to make this a mandatory field only when the user clicks on the submit button. And how do I distinguish if the user has clicked on submit or save as draft? I have my variable. In fact, I can directly go and use that local variable right here. So now if I preview my app, if I try and submit, I will get the required field validation error for the session code column because it's required when the user clicks on submit. But if I go ahead and click on save as draft, it will go ahead and save the data in my backend data source. And we can see that in action right here. And my home screen here is showcasing the items in that events list. Now, if I select this, it will take me back to that same form control and I can see that information right here. And once again, if I just try to submit, that validation will come in play. Now, all I have to do is for all the columns that I would like to be required prior to the user submitting the form, I can apply the same concept as session code. So for example, for session type, unlock the data card for the required property, set it to that variable. And I've gone ahead and implemented it for certain other columns in my form. So let's say the user has the session code. So the user puts in the code. And for the other columns, if the user is not ready to provide the information right now, and maybe would like to save it as draft again, if I click on save as draft, once again, it will submit that data to my data source. You can see that information for session code right here. And it set the status of that item to draft. And the only way the user can submit the event is by completing all the required fields. So I've just gone ahead and filled out the form. I'll put the location, select the address, the status is draft. This time I'll click on submit. So this will go ahead and set the status now as submitted. Here in my app, I can see the information related to that event. If I go back to the information tab, I can see all the information that I had filled out right here. Now I'll quickly create another event and save it as draft. So I'll give my event a title and just save as draft. Now here in my home screen and my power app, you will observe that I have this draft watermark over the new event that I just created. Now I did make the title of mandatory field for even the events that are stored as draft because I need at least one piece of information. And that's what I'm providing right here. Now let's try and see how I added this draft watermark right here. So in my Power App, under media, I added a draft watermark image. And that image is what I've added right here. If I move this across, you'll see that draft watermark moving along with it as part of my gallery. And I only show this image where the status of my event is 
draft. So you'll see the visible property here. I've set it to this item dot status, which is a choice column dot value is equal to draft. So that's how I'm showing the draft image. I'm even displaying a map here. I'm just using the Bing Maps API to plot the location that the user added on a map. I have a separate video on this, so do check that out. Here I'm showing other pieces of information related to the event that the user added. Now here is where I know that for status draft, there is a possibility that the user has not filled out the complete metadata of the form. For example, what's the type of my session? And this is where I use a function called coalesce, wherein it checks to see if the first value is blank or null. If it is, it will go ahead and place the second value that I have provided. For an event that I submitted, I had to fill session type. So I have that value, which is workshop. So it's showcasing that right here. Whereas for my draft event called project meeting, if you observe the value for session type, it's TBD. And that's thanks to the coalesce function that I've used right here. And the same use case I've applied for the start date field for the end date column and for the capacity column information. Now this gallery on my home screen is showcasing all the data from my events list. And that is because for the items property, I have directly connected it to my SharePoint list. Now let's say another user who has access to the app, when that user signs in, they will be able to see all the information from the data source. And here they can see the draft events that were created by other users. So how do we go about showcasing only those events where the status is submitted or they have been created by the current logged in user in draft mode? So for that, for the gallery control, we will add the following filter condition. So filter my data source where the status dot value is equal to submitted or I'll add my second condition here, which would be status dot value is equal to draft and created by dot email is equal to user dot email. And I will go ahead and complete the function. I've just gone ahead and formatted the text for this formula. So filter my data source if the status is equal to submitted to get me all those items or get me those items where the status is draft and the creator is the current logged in user. And just so that we print the name of the user who has created this item, I've added another label here. And the text for this would be this item dot created by dot display name. So here we can clearly see the name of the creator. So I will save and publish the app. If Sarah logs into the app and clicks on get started, Sarah can only see one event, which is Power Apps Live that was submitted by Reza. Sarah cannot see the item that Reza created in draft status. Now here, if Sarah was to create a new item and let's say Sarah puts certain details here, same concepts apply. If Sarah clicks on submit, she will be forced to enter all the required fields. If Sarah clicks on save as draft, it will go ahead, save that event information in draft status. Signed in as Reza. Reza cannot see the events that are in draft status that are created by Sarah. Now here I've leveraged the form control to submit data to my data source. But you could also have a scenario in which you're using the patch function to post your data to your data source. So here I've added an icon for save. And when the user selects this, let's say I would like to patch the data to my data source. So a very simple patch function for creating a new record is we patch to our data source, which is my event itinerary list. If I'm trying to create a new record, I'll use the defaults function. Once again, defaults of my data source. And this is where I can provide all the details for all the columns on my SharePoint list. Let's say I can enter the title. I'm going to call this sample event. Now for the form control, I had mentioned that all the columns in your data source do not apply required field validations because we'll conditionally add them inside the form control. Well, if you're using patch, 
you're not required to take that step. So let's take this example here, session code. I'm going to make this a required field and click save. So here, if I just try and execute the patch function, if I click on this button, so let's play the app, click on save. You will get an error right here in the patch function itself that says session code is required. And for our previous technique, which was the form control technique, if now I try and save as draft, it's not going to save because SharePoint is forcing that required field to be there. So for the form control technique, we need to ensure that I have not set this as required, but for patch, we can actually get around it. What we could do right here is for those required fields, for example, session code. If the user has filled a value, of course we can plug the value right here. If I do not have a value, and that's a classic scenario for save as draft, we can just set an empty string. So now if I just go ahead and preview the app and click save, you will observe that I did not get any error. And if I look at my SharePoint list, here is that event that got created. And even though there was a required field and I did not fill it out, I basically set it to an empty string in the patch function. It went ahead and stored it in my data source. Now that we've seen the two approaches, we can actually extend this technique further. And when the user clicks on submit event, we could store the status of the event as pending and maybe start an approval process around this and use the same technique to hide those events that are pending until they are approved so that other users can see those events. You can even apply true security to your items in your SharePoint list by breaking permissions on those items through Power Automate. So save as draft can be quite a handy feature. Here's another simple example of a tabbed form that the user fills out in parts. Last tab is where they can go and submit. But prior to that, they always have the save as draft button, sample content. I'll pick my content type as an article and I don't fill out the remaining portions of my form. I just click save as draft. I can see that information right here. And if I edit this, I can once again go through and fill out all the pieces of information, scroll through all the tabs, fill out all the metadata, and finally go ahead and submit my form. If you enjoyed this video, then do like, comment, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And thank you so much for watching.